Welcome back. Okay, let's get to work. Number one, según mi secretaria, no hubo llamadas durante el último bloque. According to, according to, according to my secretary, there weren't any calls. There weren't any, weren't any, there weren't any, there weren't any, there weren't any calls. Mis alumnos dirían, there weren't any calls. But I don't say that. I say, there weren't any, weren't any. La T de were not, la contracción were not, weren't, se enlace con any. There weren't any, tenny, tenny. There weren't any calls, according to my secretary. Okay. Según, se traduce according to. Según. <laughs> es, este último según no significa according to, it depends. Okay. Uh, ¿Vas a ir a la playa? Pues, uh, ¿quieres ir a la playa? Según, según el tiempo. It depends on the weather. It's interesting. Uh, según, the word según in Spanish, I think, has three different uh, interpretations in English. One is according to, según Pepe, no sabemos nada. Se, uh, según significa en opinión de. According to Pepe, we don't know anything. According to Pepe, we, don't, we have no idea what is really happening. Según. Okay. That's the first way. The, the second way is, uh, según vengan o no, whether they, or, or you can say, según, según salga el tiempo, según, okay, is whether. Whether it rains or not, okay, I don't know. It also means, a medida que venían, según venían, yo veía que as they were coming, I realized that I wasn't ready, okay, to defend my position, okay. And the segun means depending on, all right? Iré según el tiempo, depending on the weather, depending on the weather. Ahora, según mi secretaria, no hubo llamadas. According to my secretary, there weren't any telephone calls. So, we can continue with the program. Soy consciente de, los, de las posibles repercusiones. I'm aware of the possible repercussions. I know that certain problems will come up, but the decision I am going to make is a necessary decision, and the benefits that we will enjoy from this decision will be greater uh, than the disadvantages. Uh, I made a, an analysis of the situation, the pros and the cons, the advantages and the disadvantages, los, los, los pros y los contra. Las ventajas y los inconvenientes. The pros and cons. C-O-N-S. We don't say contra. The pros and cons and the um, advantages and disadvantages. And it's very clear to me uh, that we need to make a decision in favor of plan A. Now, estoy, soy consciente de las posibles reper repercusiones. I'm aware of the possible repercussions. I'm aware of the fact that this decision will have an adverse effect on certain people. I'm aware of the fact that we will need to transfer more than 200 people to Barcelona, to our Barcelona offices. And I'm aware of the fact that at least 100 of those 200 people will decide to leave the company and not go to Barcelona because their families are here in Madrid and their children are going to schools in Madrid. But, uh, in my opinion, it's totally necessary uh, to make this decision. And uh, the, ma the rest of the managers agree with me that Plan A is, sin duda, is without a doubt, the best solution to the current situation. Uh, if our company wants to be viable, if we want to, uh, to have a viable organization and a good future, we need to transfer certain operations to our Catalonia office uh, because the bulk of our clientele is there. The bulk of our clientele is located in the province, of, in the city and in the province of Barcelona. 
the bulk of our clientele. ¿Se entiende esta última frase primero, que vendemos un servicio y no un producto físico? Porque he dicho clientele. No he, no he dicho customer base. Our customers son nuestros clientes que compran productos físicos. Clients are um, clientes que adquieren intangibles o servicios. Clientele es lo mismo que clientela, pero clientela de servicio. Ahora, clientela, en, usando la palabra customer, es customer base, nuestra base de clientes, nuestra base. Our customer base, or our clientele, is located predominantly, predominantly in Barcelona. Por eso he dicho antes, the bulk of our customer base, or the bulk of our clientele, is located in the Barcelona area. So for us, it's um, logical and necessary to transfer uh, several departments to our Barcelona offices. And in fact, it's necessary to establish our headquarters in Barcelona, to move our offices, to move the headquarters from Madrid to Barcelona, because we need to be closer to the customer. We need to be closer to our clients. Okay? But volviendo a bulk, que todavía no entendéis, The, the bulk of our clients. Uh, bulk is granel. Cuando vendes algo a granel, it's bulk sales, not unit sales. Bulk. But the bulk means el grueso de nuestra clientela. The bulk of our clients are uh, located in Barcelona. So uh, we are going to transfer the headquarters to Barcelona. We will maintain offices in Madrid, commercial offices in Madrid, of course. But we will move the headquarters to Barcelona. And that will mean transferring 200 people from Madrid to Barcelona. But because in Spain, people don't like geographic mobility in the job, I imagine that at least 100 will quit, will quit. To quit is dar la baja, darse de baja. De la organización, they'll quit. They will leave the company uh, because they will prefer to stay in Madrid. And I understand it. I understand that. Many people are, have bought their homes. They are paying their mortgages. Pagando sus hipotecas. They're paying their mortgages. Perhaps some of them have bought, some of the families have bought the house of their dreams. And their children are going to a good school that the family needed four years To, uh, on the waiting list to get into the school. And now I tell them to uproot, desarregarse, to uproot and to move to Barcelona. Some of them say, sorry, no. So I'm aware. Soy consciente, dice aquí. I'm aware. I'm, I'm conscious. También se puede decir. Pero conscious es casi lo, lo contrario de inconsciente de estar sin sentido o estar despierto. To be, when you sleep, you're unconscious. When you're awake, you're conscious. I say, puede decir, I'm conscious of the possible repercussions, but that's not very common. I'm aware. I am aware, escrito. I'm a, pero se, se hace la contracción y la M manda. I'm aware. I'm aware of the possible repercussions. I'm aware of the facts. Estoy, estoy al tanto o estoy, estoy consciente del hecho de que Estoy consciente de que mucha gente será afectada. Soy consciente de que. Ese de que no lo, no lo podemos decir en inglés. El inglés no se presta a esa expresión. Tenemos que del al Soy consciente del hecho de que. I'm aware of the fact that. Por ejemplo, la expresión a pesar de que. A pesar de que Juan Luis está aquí. In spite of the fact that. Siempre añado el hecho de que en inglés. Es curioso, pero es así. I'm aware of the fact that um, it will mean a traumatic, uh, sometimes a traumatic change for some families. But the company comes first. And the company must survive. The company is going through some hard times. Estamos pasando por tiempos difíciles. Estamos, esta empresa está pasando por tiempos difíciles. Fijaos como lo acabo de decir. The company is going through, going through. Passing through no se dice. Passing through sería pasar por un túnel. The company is, físicamente, the company is going through some hard times. 
o puedes quitarlo al SAM. The company is going through hard times. Eso es mucho más directo. Estamos pasando por tiempos difíciles. No unos tiempos difíciles. The company is going through some hard times and we need to make some hard decisions. And the decisions, obviously, evidently, obviously, uh, are going to affect some people negatively. But in the long run, in the long run, a la larga, but in the long run, it is necessary to maintain the activities of the company, which in the final analysis maintains the level of employment. We are not planning to lay off any people. It's not our intention to lay off anybody. To lay off, those problems, lay, lay, L-A-Y, lay, lay, escrito, lay. Off con doble F. To lay off is despedir en sentido de una regulación de empleo. Despedir por acomodación de plantilla. No es despedir por ningún motivo disciplinario. This is to fire or to sack or to dismiss. Okay? If I fire you, it means out, puerta. Okay? That's to fire you or to sack you. Los británicos dicen muchas veces sack. Aunque la expresión to fire es más corriente a nivel mundial en el mundo de habla inglesa. To fire. You're fired. Usted queda despedido. Despedido. You're fired. Out. Okay, that, the door is that way. Okay. Clean up your, clean out your desk. <laughs> clean up your desk is uh, ordenar la mesa de trabajo. Clean out your desk is saca todo lo que tienes y aquí hay una caja. Here's a box. Clean out your desk. You're fired. Okay. I'll see you in court. I'll see you in court. That's to fire. Now, to lay off is happening all the time, everywhere in the world, especially in companies that are having problems of viability. And so they reduce manpower. They reduce staff. A veces se dice to downsize. O sea, tamaño, redimensionar hacia abajo. Sometimes they say to right size, redimensionar dentro lo correcto. These are simply euphemisms for to lay off people. El, existe el sustantivo, layoffs. Ha habido muchos despidos, despidos tipo regulación de empleo. They're, right now, right now in Detroit, in the automobile industry, there are a lot of layoffs. Okay? The big three, General Motors, Ford and Chrysler, are laying off a lot of people. It's creating some uh, emotional problems, social problems, professional and labor problems as well. It's important. Okay? It's a big problem. But to lay off. Now, we in our company, we're not planning to lay off anybody. But we have to make some hard decisions. We have to make. Tenemos que tomar. Decisiones duras, se dice in English. We have to make some hard decisions. And uh, the most important decision is to move our headquarters, la sede central, to move our headquarters to Barcelona. Because the bulk, repitiendo el grueso de nuestra clientela, the bulk, ahora sí la L sí suena, the bulk of our um, clientele is located in the province, specifically, strangely, coincidentally, in the province of Barcelona. So I'm going, I'm taking my family, and 200 other employees and managers and employees need to go to Barcelona. I know, I'm aware, como dice la frase, soy consciente de las posibles repercusiones. I'm aware of the possible repercussions, but así es la vida. That's life. That's life. La vida no es un lecho de rosas. Life isn't a bed of roses. Not everything is rose color. Okay? And I'm sorry. But it, for me, it's more important the survival of this company than the problems it could create for a certain number, cierto número de familias, a certain number of families that need to uproot, o sea, arregarse, desarregarse, and go to a different city. Barcelona is a nice city. Okay, it's a beautiful city. Okay, it has a beach. It has beautiful architecture. It has a very, it's very nice. So you'll like Barcelona. Don't worry. Okay. But you have to remember, geographic mobility 
is often necessary for companies to operate successfully. And in Spain, most Spanish people are very reluctant to move. Trasladarse, mudarse. People don't like to move. Spanish people are very conservative, extremely conservative. I'm speaking from the point of view of a person who has lived in other countries, and I know that the Spanish people are very conservative. They don't like to move. They like to grow up. They are born in Chambéry and they die in Chambéry, in the, pla in the barrio. Or they grow up in Moratalaz and they die in Moratalaz. Okay? That's very common. And especially in some cities like Seville, in the south of Spain, the Sevillanos, there's no place on this planet like Seville. They, want, they prefer, if possible, to be born in Seville, to grow up in Seville, to find a job in Seville, to carry out the, to their profession, their career, a carrera profesional, to do their career in Seville, to retire in Seville, and to die in Seville. The people in Bilbao, the same. They, there's nothing better on this planet than Bilbao. And the people in Barcelona and Madrid, a bit less, but still the same. That's very noticeable. Se ve, se, se percibe, se palpa mucho en este país. It's very noticeable for a foreigner like me. In my country, mobility is every day. Every day, people are moving constantly. The company transfers you. If you join a company in the States, que es trabajar por cuenta ajena, it means you're not the boss, you have a boss. You're working for another person or for shareholders. Shareholders, accionistas, and for the management. They move you like a marionette, and it's common. It's part of our culture. I remember um, I moved, one, two, three, four, in, before I was 18, Before I was 18, I was in Houston, New York City, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. Physically in three different places in 18 years, okay? Which is not very often, much in the United States. But I remember, I lived the last five years in Oklahoma before I went to the University of Texas. I, um, when I was 18, I lived the last five years in a house, in the same house, long time in one house. Five years. That's in the United States to live five years in the same house is quite long, all right, because of the mobility. And I remember the house next door, a casa de al lado, a chalet de al lado. The house next door was empty when we started living in our house. And they had a basketball backboard on the driveway where the cars park. Okay, it belongs to the property of the house. There was a basketball backboard. We see un tablero de, de, de baloncesto. And so I played there and practiced. There wasn't a net on the rim. The rim is el aro, the rim of the basketball. And there wasn't a net. So I bought a net. I was 13, no, I was 12 years old, 12 or 13 years old. I bought a net. And I put the net. Of course, the house didn't belong to me. The driveway for the car didn't belong to me. The basketball backboard didn't belong to me. But nobody was living in the house. It was for sale. It was, it was available on the market for sale. So I started playing basketball there. And within about three weeks or two months, I don't remember, a family came. Five girls. I remember the family. Five girls. And none of the girls played basketball. So I asked permission. I went to the, I know, hello, my name is uh, Ricky Vaughn. I live next door. Listen, uh, I've been using this basketball backboard for the past two months. If it's okay with you, can I continue using it from time to time? And they said, no problem, go ahead. And so I continued using the basketball facilities of the house next door for about six months and the family moved. They left. Two months later, another family. In five years, four families moved into that house and moved out. That's very common in the States. That, that's not uncommon. Eso no es poco común. Eso es bastante común. That's not uncommon. It's quite common because of mobility. And so, this, ex, this sentence, el número de estes, de, de esta frase, soy consciente de las posibles reper, repercusiones de esta decisión, de traslado a las oficinas. I'm 
I'm aware of the possible repercussions of our decision uh, to transfer the headquarters to Barcelona. This type of sentence you would say in Spain, but not very much less often in the United States because mobility is part of our life. And in the United States, it's part of our genetic code, practically, our Código Genético, because it's a young country, people have always been moving a lot, and it's different. Here, people are much more conservative. Estoy confundido en cuanto a quién es quién. You know? It's, I can't figure out who's who. I can't... I keep getting mixed up. I can't figure out. Do you remember, in another class, I was talking about two twin brothers and a basketball team. I remember Larry and Gary Payne. They looked just alike. I couldn't figure out which one was which. I couldn't figure out who was who, all right? It was funny. And I always got them mixed up. I always got them mixed up, all right? Yes. And in these two books, I've been using these two books the whole time. And I never get them mixed up. This book is for intermediate students, and this book is for advanced. And it's very clear, the difficulty factor between the two. This book is richer. This book is not as rich as this one. But this book is more important because the forms and structures we see in this book for intermediate are much more common in everyday language. This is a bit higher level, more expressive, more challenging, perhaps more stimulating, but this one is much more, much, much, much more important, okay, than this one, all right? I don't get them mixed up. Yo no los confundo. I don't get them mixed up, all right? But sometimes, when I meet twins, I get them mixed up. I get them mixed up. I remember I have a, a stu many years ago, I had a student whose name was Adolfo, and um, in the company, and I was giving class to Adolfo. And then one Saturday or Sunday, I was walking in the streets, the, the back streets, como los back street boys, the back streets, los calles de atrás, uh, near the Plaza de España in Madrid, and I saw Adolfo. And I said, hola Adolfo, ¿qué tal? In Spanish. And he said, no soy Adolfo, soy su hermano. And I didn't know Adolfo had a twin, okay, but they looked just alike. And I got them mixed up. Okay, confundí. Estoy hecho un lío. I'm mixed up. I am mixed, mezclado arriba, literalmente. Mixed up. Mixed up. It's difficult to pronounce, porque mixed tiene un X, y la X en inglés suena. So le decimos taxi, no le decimos tasi. Los taxis de Extremadura, taxis, the taxis in Extremadura are expensive. La X suena duro. The taxis in Extremadura are expensive. Okay, taxis. Mix is una mezcla. Mezcla, to mix. Okay, to mix water and wine. To mix. Y el pasado o el participio es una ed al final, de la, después de la X, y se produce mixed. Mixed. Si te cuesta, lo siento. Pero si lo dices cien veces, mixed, 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 ya no te va a costar. Es simplemente una cuestión sencillísima de estar cinco minutos diciendo mixed, mixed, que es como si K-S-T, K-S-T, es el sonido fonético, mixed. Y forzarlo, exagerarlo, Y luego ya no tendrás que forzarlo ni exagerarlo porque te saldrá bien. Pero si no te sientas y cinco minutos, venga que dale, mixed, 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 no me vengas después quejándote que tu fonética no es buena en inglés. ¿eh? The phonetic sounds in English are not so difficult. Most, practically all, habrá excepciones. I'm sure there's some exceptions. But most phonetic sounds are easy if you practice them, but you have to practice them. Come on, okay? But you never do it. Mixed up? I'm not mixed up anymore. Right now, no estoy hecho un lío, eh? Lo tengo muy claro ahora. I'm not mixed up because it's time to say goodbye again. All good things. Todas buenas cosas tienen que llegar a su fin. All good things must come to an end. All good things must come to an end and your English class too. But 
I'll be back. Eso prometo. I'll be back. Dios mediante, si, God, si Dios quiere. God willing, I'll be back. Okay, so in the meantime, mientras tanto, in the meantime, study. Do it for me, okay? Thank you.